I started keeping journals under Bill Clinton's administration. I became a pastor in 1984 under uh, Ronald Reagan. And during uh, his administration and George Bush Sr., I had uh, a half a dozen dreams that I could remember them. They were very vivid. The reason I started keeping journals and recording under President Clinton, they started coming so rapid fire. The ones I had before that, you know, I'd wake up from the dream. I mean, I couldn't get it out of my mind. It'd stay there the rest of my life. I could write them down 10 years later as though I'd had them that night. They were that vivid. And, uh, but when Bill Clinton got in office, I spent several days in my office weeping, maybe a month, a month, off and on through a month, just weeping. And uh, I knew it had to do with the Clintons. I was born in West Virginia, but I was raised in uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, uh, the Razorbacks, Fort Smith Northside High School. Very, uh, everybody likes the Razorbacks. And that, I was an athlete. And so uh, when Bill Clinton got in office, I'm in Texas in Fort Worth in 19. I come here in 84. When he is uh, in office in 1993, that's a big, big deal. Uh, there had not been an Arkansas uh, president from Arkansas to that point. So it was a big deal. And uh, I wouldn't say I was that much in politics by any, any uh, stretch of the imagination. As far as Democrats or Republicans, I didn't really know that much about politics. As a matter of fact, I voted for Jimmy Carter, the Democrat, uh, the first time I was ever able uh, to vote. Uh, if I had to do that again, I obviously would not vote for Jimmy Carter. Some of the stuff that I want to share with you goes right along with Jimmy Carter. Spirit that uh, in America uh, that wants to do Israel harm. And, and Jimmy Carter claimed to be a Christian. He's the one that got busted out making a, 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 a comment in a Playboy magazine that he's tempted with women sometime or something. And they made a big deal about that. He builds Habitat houses now and writes these books, and he's on everybody's board. He's just a straight-up guy. I've met a lot of straight-up guys. A lot of them have this thing called German higher criticism. I wouldn't say that's what he is, but... Uh, uh, he's so high that he exalts that above what the Bible says. For uh, example, he thinks that Jerusalem should be an international uh, city and not the Jewish people, Israel's capital, or it should be divided. Well, that's the Bible warns and warns against that. That's not to happen. But there were things happening in our government that really got to rolling about the time that Jimmy Carter got in. Uh, he was uh, carrying a Bible, but he he doesn't believe the Bible that he carries. I believe he's, quote, just a good person who helps people, but he's not been born again from above, has a spiritual experience to realize that that Bible, that word is God breathed, every bit of it, and that we're to take it just as it is. But So Jimmy Carter gets in office uh, in 1976. And I'm, I'm out of high school. I've been in Florida uh, going to school uh, in Orlando and just traveling, a young person uh, in my early 20s. And don't really settle down until uh, about 1982 uh, in Fort Worth, Texas. So from Jimmy Carter, and I'm in uh, uh, college uh, in 79 when the when the Iranian hostage crisis goes down and remembering all that was about. So what happened was that after Jimmy Carter got out of office, Ronald Reagan got into office. And uh, during Ronald Reagan's time is when I go into the ministry. And I have, uh, like I said, about a half dozen dreams between the time of Ronald Reagan up to the time of Clinton going on through uh, George Bush Sr., the Berlin Wall coming down, uh, Bill Clinton getting in office. And all of those dreams, they were so vivid over about that decade, that decade of time 
you know, I could remember every one of them. But when Bill Clinton gets in office, I remember sitting in a neighbor's house and watching the signing of the Oslo Accords on the White House lawn. That's where Bill Clinton uh, either was working on getting a Nobel Peace Prize or got one for bringing uh, Israel, Rabin, Clinton, America, Arafat, the Palestinians together and, and signing these Oslo Accords to land for peace. And I knew when I saw that in 93, it would not work because the Bible says it doesn't work. I was raised in a, a good Bible uh, teaching church uh, and, and raised with parents. You know, I'd ask them, well, what does this mean? And they tell, well, what does the Bible say, David? So I was, I've always been referred back to the Bible by, by, uh, by the grace of God. And then when I got saved, I was born again from above. I realized no wonder they were referring me back to the Bible. This thing came from above. This is not man. Okay. So, so I remember sitting in that, in, in that person's house watching that going, this is not going to work. I'd like, everybody would like it to work, but it won't work. Well, in November 19, uh, 95, about two years later, I went to bed and got up in the morning and I had a dream. Now, you got to remember, Israel's eight hours ahead of us, their time period. And the dream that I had, I was flying through space towards something. And about the time I could focus on what it was, I saw it was the Lord standing on the throne with the elders the 24 elders. And as quick as I recognized it, I was gone, back, gone. And when I got up from that dream, I wrote it down. I told somebody about it. I said, man, I knew in Isaiah 6 that you could find God sitting on the throne and his his, his uh, train going through the temple, the long train, and what he wears. And and uh, But I asked a couple of people, hey, uh, do you remember where God stands on the throne? And no, they didn't. So went through the day and about in, the, in that afternoon, Rabin was assassinated on the other side of the world in Israel at 930 in the evening. The next newspaper we got was the Sunday morning newspaper on the way to church. And, uh, so when I saw that Rabin had been killed, as fantastic as my dream was for the uh, prime minister of Israel to be assassinated, Lord, was this what you were showing? So that week getting ready for the messages and working on stuff, I actually, for Sunday morning and Sunday night, I had prepared messages where I had God standing on the throne in the passages. So when I'm preaching that evening and that morning I run right across it and it floored me that in, in both of these passages uh, actually there's more than one there's probably about six but two of them are real specific that God stands on the throne uh, with the elders to judge the, the, the elders the leaders the rulers of Israel. He stands in heaven to judge them. That's when you're when he's standing, he's bringing judgment upon the leadership of Israel. So uh, I remember when I saw that and I was going home that day from church, the Lord laid on my heart. Uh, David, uh, what what do you think I'm going to do to those who twisted the president of Israel, Rabin's, arm behind his back to sign those peace accords to give my land away. If, if I killed him, the leader, the apple of my eye, Israel, if I, if, if I allowed him to be assassinated, so it was God's will. What am I going to do to those that twisted his arm behind his back? Well, he didn't answer, and I didn't have an answer. But I never forgot it because I knew the Lord was speaking to me. And it's also from around that period of time that I really go to writing this stuff down. 
the Lord's got two or three things going on in my life, teaching me to pay real close attention and glean to the last 1%. So the years go by. And uh, uh, you got to remember, Oslo is, is the Clinton initiative. Uh, his only initiative was not uh, Monica Lewinsky, but the Oslo Accords. That's what he's really famous for. That's uh, that's that's supposedly his his clout. Uh, Jimmy Carter had gone in his administration a few years back uh, before Reagan and uh, did uh, Camp David situation where he got uh, Anwar Sadat to sign uh, with Manak and Begin for peace. The Sinai, uh, uh, Israel gave the Sinai to Egypt, all this oil, billions of dollars worth of oil for peace with Egypt, a peace treaty. So it was, Clinton didn't actually start all the process in that direction. Uh, but so you could really put it on, on, on Jimmy Carter. But by the time you get to Clinton and he does the Oslo Accords, it's going full steam. And this thing with Monica Lewinsky, that is the least of his problems. The worst thing that Bill Clinton ever did to eternally regret is that he forced Rabin and pushed him in a corner to sign the Oslo Accords. If you watch that on the White House lawn, he did not want to shake hands with Arafat because he knew he was a terrorist, a murderer, and a liar. But he was forced to do it. Go back and watch it. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. When those were signed, after that were being died, I've got the, that. I still got that newspaper from that morning going and getting it before going to church about the assassination. Then a few years later, Arafat dies of some communicable syphilis, AIDS, blood poison, something. He's gone. And, uh, um, and then George Bush gets in office. And, and he comes up with a great deal to give Gaza away and, and haul and tote settlers out of there, the Israeli military, to force settlers, Israelis, out of their land. And uh, as soon as he does that, Hurricane Katrina hits. New Orleans, and God gave me a dream before that, if that's written down, and our people were displaced by the hundreds of thousands compared to their thousands. Because God always sends warning before judgment. But after that, Sharon dealing with Bush and going along with that We'll help you, Israel. Go along with me, Sharon. We'll work this out, Mr. Bush tells him. He goes along with it, has them settlers carried out of there, and he has a massive stroke that he lays in for almost a decade. Every time one of these Israeli leaders does this, they go down. God whips them right away. That's his firstborn. He didn't let his firstborn get away with anything. We're all his children, but there's a firstborn, you see. And uh, just recently, I mean, he just died in the last two years. What's really interesting is, is that the, the night we elected Obama to his first term, and we knew he ran around with terrorists, Bel Airs, who killed police officers and planted bombs. He went to a church that the pastor said, kill whitey, hate whitey, blankety blank America. We knew he was a racist, 
communist. But we put him in office because of white guilt that allowed our system to get into place for it to happen. But God allowed it to happen. Because the night Obama was elected, when he stood up on that stage, that Pergamus remake of a Pergamus stage that came out of Germany that Hitler stood on and gave that rousing speech like Hitler, that night that he was elected, I got up from my chair in front of the TV, went over to my desk, and there was my daily newspaper. I opened it up and I went to read and I read to the back page and a little spot on the bottom said today November the 4th is the day Rabin was assassinated actually he was a they usually celebrate it a couple of days before or a couple of days after of November 4th because of issues in Israel with other things but that day that Obama said, yes, I accept, I'm your president, November the 4th was the day that uh, Rabin was assassinated. The Lord said to me, after all of those years, from 1995 to 2008, he answered the question he asked me. This is what I do to those who twist Israel's arm behind her back to make her give her land away. I, I give him Obama. Now, Obama's job is to do just what he's doing to America. To dismantle it. Divide it. Destroy it and conquer it. Because exactly what our American president, Bill Clinton, has done, Jimmy Carter has done, George Bush has done, even Ronald Reagan has done, to Israel by manipulating policies in the Middle East behind oil, money, arrogance, lack of knowledge, is what God is allowing to happen to us. So here's the principle. America or any country will go down before Israel goes down. Now, because the Bible says so, and that's all I need to know. By the way, this is only for those who believe, okay? So I'm going on. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3 says that every nation in the last days that tries to divide the land of Israel will be cut to pieces. Cut to pieces. I mean, cut to pieces. Like Jeffrey Dahmer. He used to get his victims and give them a drink with something in it and then cut them to pieces. And they'd be in jars and he'd eat on them for a while. Well, America's being dismembered. The Constitution's being destroyed. All the rights are being taken away. The Holocaust that we set Israel up for is coming to America. Now, in the last few days, I saw President Clinton talking about Israel. And he was threatening Israel before the whole world saying, um, Israel, you really don't want to do this. You don't want to isolate yourself from us, man. And our opinions and what we think the rest of the world, man. And the Lord reminds me of a dream that I had. right before Obama got in office. That I'm sitting at a railroad track 
and I'm looking out my windshield, and the train's going by, and the box, the the box cars, the doors are open. They, you know, whether cattle cars, whatever they put in them, but the side of the box cars are open, and where the doors are open, all the way, that has become a screen. And I'm watching a movie as the cars go by, as time goes by. See, with God, there's no time. God's not in time. We try to look at God, figure him, why did God let this happen? How come it's taking this long? You know, and try to figure God in time. God's not in time. Time was created for us to do what we're doing. But so this boxcar, each boxcar being a, uh, a clip of a film, like an old movie, a slide. President Clinton is in there with the, a young woman fornicating, doing what he's famous for, and what a brand new book just came out about him doing, and what uh, the girl McCarthy, who was just on uh, uh, The View with these other women were talking about a couple of days ago that's running across the news now. While this came to me, Lord brought it back to me and made me go back and think about that dream. So this, this boxcar is going by, and every every clip is, is, a, is a slide, is a film. And President Clinton is in there fornicating with a young blonde woman. And then it ends up, the clips start being, she cuts and slits his throat like a hog. And I wake up from the dream. Well, back then when I had the dream, uh, you know, just think, well, that's what will happen to you if you keep messing around. Uh, anybody that plays with sin, you know, the wages of sin is death. Sin brings death. So, But it says that I will cut them to pieces that divide my land. And the Lord's telling me, David. Rabin paid, Arafat paid, Sharon paid. There's more men to pay. Bill hadn't paid. And not only that, he hadn't repented because he's standing on TV now in 2014 threatening Israel. And I know how to save the best for last, David. I know how to make my point and get my point across to everybody and make them tremble with fear. The Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap that. And the Bible tells us in Ezekiel, say, hey, you know, if you're doing bad and you for, repent from that and go the other way, I'll forget about the bad I was going to bring on you. Or if you're doing good and you decide to start doing bad, I'll forget about the good I was going to bring you. I'm going to get you for your bad. But God knows the hearts of all men. He knows the times of all men. And what Bill Clinton is doing now, where the Bible says in Zechariah 12.3, Every nation that divides my land, I will cut them to pieces. It looks like Bill Clinton is fixing to get cut to pieces individually himself one way or another and be made an example of before the whole world and being humiliated and shamed because that's what he's tried to do to the people of Israel. We are now setting very close to Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, Gog and Magog, the battle of Russia. And Israel and the the Orthodox Jews in Jerusalem have always believed that Russia attacks America before they go into Israel the signs of war are everywhere the plane was just shot down with nearly 300 people on it over your Ukraine nobody escapes God and Bill Clinton will not escape God and as much as I like Arkansas, as much as I have things in my life of my past that were pleasurable and, and memories and stuff, we're going to leave this life and memories aren't going to mean nothing. You either have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, been born again, and you are now an, 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 an inheritor. You are now adopted into the kingdom. You've received the kingdom of God. 
to be with Jesus Christ or you're going to be lost in an eternal hell. The Bible says if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, what does it profit you? And man, a bunch of these presidents and kings, a bunch of these people who gained all this stuff and, and live the way they want to live on this earth, they're going to die and go to hell unless they repent. And everybody's listening to me today. Uh, as Bill Clinton is going to get his, we're going to get ours. God deals with sin in two places. He dealt with it at Calvary. The, the, the fires of God's judgment burned upon him for sin because of our sin that he took upon him. And we'll have our sins dealt with there. They'll be paid for by him. Or we will have our sins dealt with in hell. And that is the choice today for all of us. Today, if you've not made Jesus your Lord and your Savior, now's time to, to ask him to come into your heart and to be your, your Lord and your Savior. I'm going to pray with you right now to do that. Lord Jesus, those under the sound of my voice that's listening to you today, Lord, and say, Lord, I know there's a reason, that, Lord, that you brought me to this tape today, this man saying those things. Lord, these things have been on my heart. I've wondered all these questions, Lord, and I know what he's saying is true. And, and I know it's time for me to receive you as Lord. And I do want to repent of my sins, and I'm sorry for what I've done, Lord. Well, just pray with me now. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for the sins that I've committed. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, that all men are born sinners. I, my own guilt in my heart for the sin that I've done, I know that I'm wrong. And Lord, I, 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 I fear you, Lord. I don't want to be uh, separated from you in an eternal hell, but I want to be with you in heaven. Because Lord, I, 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 life has been hard enough. My sin's been hard enough. Lord, I want you. I want your heavenly kingdom, Father. I repent today of my sins. Lord, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Save me from my sins and fill me with the Holy Ghost, Father, and do this in Jesus' name. Amen.